Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to my chemistry lessons. In this video, I'll tell you how atomic orbitals are filled up. So we'll do the filling up of atomic orbitals. In the previous video, I told you about the energies of atomic orbitals and how the n plus l value decides which orbital has lower energy and which has higher energy. So according to that, I've just written down all the orbitals and this is a diagram which is a very easy tool to learn or memorize. During the examination, you can just make this at the back sheet and refer to it every time you have to answer a question about the energies of orbitals. So I'll just tell you what this trick is. The first shell has only one s orbital. The second shell has s and p orbitals. The third shell has 3s, 3p, 3d. The fourth shell has 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f. The five, fifth shell has 5s, 5p, 5d, 5f and 5g also, but I have written only 5f. 6s, 6p, 6d, 6f, 6g, but we will write only 6d. 7s and 7p. Why do we write only we eliminate some of these is because all the elements that are known to scientists today can be accommodated in just these uh, orbitals or these subshells. Therefore, the others, since we do not know those elements, it's easy to keep them away to make it easier for us to learn. So now, what you have to do is you have to trace a line. And when you trace this line, the line tells you which electron fills up first or uh, which orbital fills up first or which has the lowest energy. We know the first shell, principal quantum number one, n plus l values decide the energy of an orbital and if the sum of n and l is the same then the one which has a lower number of n has a lower energy. This we already know. But let's trace this in this diagram. The first shell is supposed to have 1s has the lowest energy. So the electrons of the 1s shell first fill up. So we'll have these arrows going downwards. After the 1s orbital, it is the 2s orbital which fills up. So the next is 2s. Then after this, trace it up, 2p, 3s, we make diagonal lines and it is the 3s, 2p, 3s. Then after 3s, it is the 3p orbital, 4s orbital that fills up. 3p, 4s, then 3d, we just making diagonal lines. After 4s, it is 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s, 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s, 5f, 6d, 7p. So this diagram, if you have all the arrows pointing downwards, going this way, you get the direction of filling up of these orbitals. So, as I did in the previous video, you can see 1s, 2s is 2 and 0. The sum of n plus l is 2. For 2p, 2 and 1, sum is 3. For 3s, 3 and 0, sum is 3. But since the principal quantum number here is 2, therefore 2p has lower energy than 3s. So the logic behind it we have already understood in the previous video. We are now understanding just this quick tool to memorize which orbitals have lower energy and what is the sequence of increasing energy. So if you learn this diagram and just sketch it out on a rough sheet or on the last sheet of your uh, paper, you'll find it really very helpful. Now how do electrons fill up in, a, in these orbitals? Well, imagine you're going for a show. And it's the show of your favorite star. And there are lots and lots of fans of the same star. And you go for the show. What is your intention? Your intention is to go to the front, right in front, and be the closest to the star so that you can have a good view of the show. 
Now the nucleus is like that star and the electrons are like those fans. They want to be closest to the nucleus and they want to go to that orbital which has the lowest energy. So the, there are three principles which decide how electrons fill up in, an, in these orbitals. These three are, the first one is the off-bow principle. Off-bow principle says that electrons, when they fill up in the ground state of an atom, when electrons fill up, they always do so in the sequence of filling up the lowest energy level first. Let me read the exact language of the Aufbau principle. The Aufbau principle says that in the ground state of the atoms, the orbitals are filled in order of their increasing energies. The orbitals are filled in order of their increasing energy. So the first electron would go to the 1s shell. The second electron would also, you know, every orbital has a capacity of two electrons. So when that orbital fills up, then the third electron will move to the 2s shell. The fourth will also go to the 2s shell. The fifth electron would move to 2p. 2p has three orbitals. Therefore, it will have six electrons. The next six electrons, that is, would go to 2p. After these six go, the next electron would move to 3s. And another one again in 3s. And then in 3p, there are six uh, capacity of six electrons because there are three orbitals so the next six electrons would go to 3p and then the next two would go to 4s after 4s the next 10 would go to 3d so this is how the off power principle says that electrons in the ground state of an atom they occupy the well, the energy level, the lowest energy level first and in that sequence they keep occupying, the, the electrons keep occupying orbitals according to their increasing energy levels but they first go to the lowest energy level. So in the ground state, that's why in hydrogen that one electron is in the ground state is present in the 1s orbital. The next uh, principle is known as the Pauli exclusion principle. It says that no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of four quantum numbers. It's understandable. We know the principal quantum number tells us about the shell. The azimuthal quantum number tells us about the subshell, whether it's the S shell, S subshell, P subshell, D subshell or F subshell. The third quantum number, that is the magnetic quantum number, tells us about the orbital, whether it is px, py, pz, whether it is dxy, dyz, dxz or any of the d orbitals. So the electron and once you reach an orbital, the spin quantum number tells us that out of those two orbitals, one has a positive spin and the other has a negative spin. Therefore, if there are two electrons in an atom, no two electrons can have the same set of all the four quantum numbers. Because even if they have the same set of the first three quantum numbers, the fourth quantum number, that is the spin quantum number, has to be different. One of those two electrons has to be positive and one of those two electrons has to be negative. Or one of them should have an upspin and one of them should have a downspin. Or one of them should spin clockwise and one of them should spin anticlockwise. So the Pauli exclusion principle says that the four quantum numbers for every electron in an atom are exclusive. That's why we call it the Pauli exclusion principle. No two electrons in an atom can have the same set of four quantum numbers. The third is the Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity. This talks about degenerate orbitals. Do you see that if this is the 2p subshell, it has three orbitals, px, 2px, 2py and 2pz. But all the three 2p orbitals are identical. They are only different in their directions, but their energies are identical. So we say they are degenerate. So Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity says that if electrons are filling up, like, like we say, this is the lowest energy. So the first two electrons go here. The next two electrons go to 2s. But when the electrons come to 2p, do they fill up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? Is this the sequence or is it something else? He said that when electrons come to such degenerate orbitals of a subshell, each 
orbital, one electron goes to each orbital first. No pairing occurs unless one has gone occupied each orbital. And then the first three electrons will go to the Px, Py, Pz. The fourth electron will start pairing. Fifth and sixth electron. So what's the language of this, the Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity? It's pairing of electrons in the orbitals belonging to the same subshell, that is P, D or F, does not take place until each orbital belonging to that subshell has got one electron each, that is, it is singly occupied. It's easy to understand why this happens. Electrons repel each other. And if they repel each other and they have the same energy orbitals and you have three different orbitals, like there are three different, um, what do I say, uh, swings in a park for children who go out to play. And each swing can have one kid. Would they go and all the three swings are identical? The first three kids who go will try to occupy one swing each. They don't like to share it. But it's only when a fourth kid comes, he comes and shares a swing. And the fifth one will share it with the next one. And the sixth one will share it with the next one. So this is Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity. That when you have degenerate orbitals of a subshell, the electrons first singly occupy each orbital and pairing only starts after all of them have been singly occupied. So these were the rules which decide how the orbitals are filled up in an atom. So now this knowledge leads us to the next step in uh, our study of the structure of an atom. How are electrons arranged in an atom? So that would be 